Sue Cowley's come to the International School and Community College in Birmingham to work with Head of Teaching and Learning, Jan Williams. Jan's an experienced teacher who often has to take over lessons at short notice. Today, Jan will be teaching a science lesson to a small group of pupils, many of whom have English as their second language. Sue will be watching the lesson from a nearby room and coaching Jan through a concealed earpiece. Sue will look at how to use your voice in the classroom and be highlighting techniques to use when teaching EAL students. She'll also provide her personal insight into how Jan manages her class. I've been teaching for 34 years in all, 22 years in this school. And I'm sure in that time I've learnt a lot, but I'm sure I've got into some bad habits as well. There's only 10 students in the group, right. but they are very low level ability. Right. There's some students who have very poor levels of English. Most of them are below national curriculum level three. Right. So they would be what we would call our nurture group. Just 10 pupils, but perhaps some serious issues. Now, Jan set herself up. She knew she was having this class today. She's got a clear lesson plan, and she's also put some nameplates on the tables, which is really going to help her address the students by name. Look, for an A and a T together. Shabina, I'll put you down here, OK? Welcome. You're going to find me these words on your word search. OK? Good girl. Come on, Zach. What, what, have it? Coat off, morning. Shabon, sit there, yeah? Habib? Um, or are you Adam? It's my seat, that's my friend. Uh, uh, in your seat. What's your name? Adim Adim. Adim. You're there, okay. Find your word search. Jan, let's have a command, something like, come on everyone, let's get this going, let's get our word search done nice and quickly. Everybody's sitting hey, come down. Come on, let's get our word search done. Have you got a pen? Right. Particle. Particle. So, Bowen, can you say particle for me? So, Jan's using lots of repetition here, saying the same word over and over, because these students have English as an additional language. So, she's really trying to get them to understand the vocabulary that they're going to be using during the lesson. I'm sure that... In a few weeks, you will know these off by heart, round the wrong way, and backwards. OK. Look at the board. Hadnam, I need you to look at the board. Hadib, I need you to look at the board, please. I'm looking, You're looking. I'm miss, not man. Do I look like a man? No, I'm miss. OK, remember that, Sabawan. I'm a miss. Right, what are we learning to do today? We're no learning to know what elements and compounds are made of. Like elements and compounds, what they're actually made of. Jan, when you've explained the objective, can you see if you can get one of the students to repeat it back to you? Maybe one or two of them. Maybe Emma, who's looking a bit disengaged. Be able to identify an atom, an element and a compound. Emma, what must we be able to do? What have we got to be able to do by the end of the lesson, everybody? Identify atom, element. And how are we going to do that? Carl, what are these things made of? Well done. They're made of metal. Zach, metal. Can you say metal for me? Metal. metal. Good. They're made of metal. metal. If you can imagine yourself being in a classroom in a country where you don't know the language so and the teacher is talking in that so language that you hardly know any vocabulary of, and you must pass your days in this kind of blur of just noise. And so what Jan's doing here is picking out the words that they need to assimilate. And by saying them over and over again, she's hoping that some of this will stick with these students. What am I looking for? 
Jan hasn't spent too long introducing the topic of the lesson to the class. So that's probably about sort of eight minutes where she was actually talking them through the new terms, getting them to say these words. What do you think we would see? We're drawing what we think we would see if we could look right inside the metal. Jan, could you perhaps get that boy's partner to just talk him through what they've done so far? The boy sitting next to him, I don't know if that's appropriate. Mohammed, can you just give, give Kairos a little hand to, to tell him what we're, what we're trying to do here? See if he can tell him the words. <laughs> How about the words we've used? Often with EAL students, one of the most effective techniques you can use is, you know, you be teacher, teach each other. And sometimes the students will, you know, go into a different language, doesn't really matter, as long as they've got the understanding there in, in English in the first place, they can then communicate with, with each other. And perhaps think as well about getting a student up to the front and telling the class, even in another language, doesn't always have to be uh, sticking to the English. So what we would see, can I have pens down now, please? We we'll use the whiteboards again in a minute. You can leave them on there so it'll help you. So they all touch. Jan, can you bring your, the volume of your voice down? Make them listen to you. OK. Pens down. Put your top on your pen, please. Brilliant. That's really She's got great. quite um, a high volume relative to what is actually necessary for this group. That was lovely, Jan. Thank you. That was really lovely. There was one group there. They might have four joined together. Thank you. They might have six joined together. Okay, I'm not Adnan, how are those the same? That Jan, up to now, hasn't done any writing with them at all. They've done some drawing. She's made the professional judgment that actually what's crucial here is that they understand that they have the hands-on experience and the vocabulary, actually getting them to write about it may be a challenge too far, a literacy challenge that would just be that little bit too much. Better that they feel successful and confident at the end of the lesson. Each one has got two in. Can you build me one with more than two? Yeah. Jan, when you go around to the individuals, can you just experiment with taking your volume really low, right? Get right in close to them. And again, it's just this thing of a habit that you get trapped into. I talk at this volume when I talk to the whole class, but actually when I go into an individual, I can get nice and quiet and just... So they... And what happens there is the child feels like it's personalised that little interaction. It's just about me and that child for a moment. So we've got... You've got one there. But you how are you going to use your other colours? How are you going to use your other There's a lovely little moment here. Just a little I smile from Jam. We haven't seen too many. She's, she's keeping it quite... Uh, not, not strict or firm, but she's keeping it a little bit distance from them, but then they get a little smile as they reward. OK, you've got one minute left. One minute. How many have you built? I guess when you've been doing it this long, it's kind of... It becomes part of you. It just becomes an instinct to say these things, to do these things. How many have you got? One. Are you going to do another one? Jan, this is absolutely lovely. We're really enjoying watching you. Right. The atmosphere is so calm, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. Lovely, lovely and calm. How about, how about doing that? Oh, my God. How about doing that? Oh, Zach, that was really nice. Thank you. Right, we've got 30 seconds. This is the, the minute that can last as long as a minute needs to last. So you kind of make a judgment, really, about how long they need. Ten seconds. OK, now, a bit of finger exercise. <laughs> wiggle your fingers. Sack, wiggle your fingers. Give them a bit of exercise. Carl, I can't see your hands wiggling. Well, that's it. And stop wiggling. 
Sir Bowen? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, I've seen your hands. Okay, <laughs> Sometimes me, children can be me too me engaged. <laughs> me now, show you don't me. want to let them show go. Me what you've... So, okay, put those to the side. Put those to the side and use your whiteboards for me. Adnan, I need you to use your whiteboard now. Sir Bowen, I need you to use your whiteboard. Kairos, that's great, you're ready. Carl, are you ready with your pen? Habib, Habib, are you ready? Pen when you have ready? a larger group, say 20, 30 students, Whiteboard. you would need those Whiteboard. moments during the lesson when you write, everybody come back to me, because if they're not all back to you, then it's quite hard to control with larger numbers. Whereas Jan hasn't really done that. She's kind of kept this almost kind of constant input, reassurance, everybody, come on, let's move on to the next bit because that's best suited to this the type board. of class. There are some pictures here. Got some good ones there. Sir Bowen, is this one big compound? No. Is this a big compound, Sir no. Bowen? No. Yeah. She's one timed it impeccably, actually. They're just getting towards the end. There's about 10 minutes to go. So they're going to do this activity, then she's going to pull them back together to check the Walt and the Will have been achieved. And they'll leave with that sense that there's been no sort of rush, no pressure during the lesson. Is that an atom? An atom is all on its own. All on its own. Who thinks they know what an element is? An element. An element. Mohammed, do you think you know what an element? Tell us there what is an element. extent to which, as a teacher, this feels like pulling teeth. It's like, come on, I've led you through this for an hour. Who can tell me? Please, please, please be able to tell me. Well done. And they can. There you go. And for me. So a lovely, calm ending to the lesson. Jan's getting them to leave their resources on the table. She's given them some positive reinforcement. A really, really successful lesson. Were there some useful things that I pointed up for you? Yes, there's usually more people in the class, so I have to raise my voice much more. Yes. And you really made it clear that I needed to change my voice levels for different parts of yeah. the lesson. Yeah, and I think there were some lovely moments. You came in close with some of those students, and there were some lovely little intimate moments where they really connected with you, even though you, you don't know them particularly mm. well. Do you think that they really understood what they, what they were doing? I think most of them got the idea of it, but the, the language, the scientific language with that type of group is always going to be a problem, needs lots of reinforcements, using the words, doing the same things in, in different ways to keep that language going. I think they got the idea of generally what an element was, what, what a compound was. They really went away from that lesson feeling very positive. I hope you did too. Yes, I did, yes. Good. Very good. I enjoyed it. <laughs>